Good evening and welcome to Ray Etzler Gymnasium inside Crestview High School for tonight's matchup between the Liberty Benton Eagles and the Crestview Knights. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, we should have a tremendous matchup tonight. Two teams with pretty different skill sets. The Crestview Knights coming in on a five-game win streak. An undefeated Liberty Benton squad with talent all over the floor. It should be an excellent matchup. You're right, Nate. I'm excited to be your wingman tonight, and you're correct. Two tradition-rich programs. The Liberty Benton Lady Eagles 8-0. Crestview Lady Knights 5-2. Going to be a good one. Now take a look at tonight's starting lineups first for the Liberty Benton Eagles. They're going to start number five, Sophia Barbara. Number 10, Kylie Recker. Number 11, Riley Irwin. Number 23, Lauren Gherkin. And number 25, Addie Crow. Liberty Benton won the opening tip, and we'll begin with the basketball. Crestview Lady Knights, if you take a look there, number 10 for the Lady Knights, Lacey McCoy. She's staying in the paint, not guarding anybody. Great play by Callie Gregory as she came across to send that one back. And that's going to lead to a turnover. So the Crestview Lady Knights come up with the first big defensive stand. And that was a big possession. Obviously, the entire game to play. But for Crestview to come out here on that first possession and to show that they're going to stick with them, especially down low, where the height advantage very much goes towards Liberty Benton, was a big opening possession. It sure does. Two girls at six feet, one at six three, who comes off the bench. But the Lady Knights had three girls playing man, two girls playing zone in that first defensive possession. Liberty Benton in their patented 2-3 half-court zone defense. Take a look at the starting lineup tonight for the Crestview Lady Knights. They're going to start number three, Macy Kowicki. Number four, Ellie Klein. Number five, Callie Gregory. Number 10, Lacey McCoy. And number 21, Joy Z uh, Josie Kowicki. As Lacey McCoy comes up with the first basket of the night. And Crestview is on top early 2-0. Yeah, McCoy with the offensive rebound and the stick back. Three-pointer is a long rebound down to Gregory. Had the opportunity to call the Crestview game last week against Columbus Grove, and Callie Gregory had herself a night, completely took that game over to lead Crestview to that victory. Over 20 points in that game. She did offensive, offensively and defensively, and she has that skill set as we're going to have a travel. Lacey McCoy that time trying to jump stop, had her feet slide on her. But uh, Callie Gregory, she has the skill set. She can take games over and dominate on both sides of the, of the basketball. Yeah, she will need to be effective offensively tonight, and she is a concern for Coach Irwin and the Lady Eagles. That's our first whistle for the game tonight. Mike Magoo, Les Hockenberry, and Doug Etzler are officials. Gherkin with the catch and shoot. That one rattles in. Offensive rebound down to Liberty Benton. Third opportunity. No good. That one's going to go out of bounds. Sent back one more time by Callie Gregory. And the basketball will stay with the Eagles. So a couple offensive rebounds there for Liberty Benton. They come up empty, but they maintain possession. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be off. As Riley Irwin, we were talking prior to the game, just a pro prolific three-point shooter. She has already attempted over 73 pointers, but hits them at a 40% clip. She is going to be dangerous from behind the arc and someone that you're going to have to run out and Really, that's how that offense works. She hits three-pointers. They get it down down on the inside with their height, and you see a lot of baskets that way as you see Gherkin come up with the steal. Yeah, she has shot 75 threes and counting. Crestview as a team has only shot 85. Amazing statistic for Riley Irwin. This, this Liberty Benton team also gets lots of turnovers as you saw Gherkin come through with the steal on the other end. Uh, down here on the offensive side of things, we have a foul. That one is going to go against number five, Callie Gregory. That is her first, team's first. Obviously, Crestview cannot afford to have Gregory get in foul trouble that she picks up her first. And as we said, Crestview's playing what we would turn to as his coaches, a junk defense. Three girls playing man-to-man. -man. McCoy playing zone at the free throw line. Gregory playing free th or zone at the basket. She's got to be careful down there. Wall up against those offensive players for Liberty Benton and not foul here the remaining of the first half. Sophia Barbara was at the free throw line, unable to connect on either one of her shots. Rebound came down to the Lady Knights. Still with the early 2-0 lead. Excuse me, as McCoy tried to go underneath the basket along the baseline, couldn't get that one to go. Gherkin going to work, spins to the middle, had that one rejected. That is the third rejection by the Lady Knights already here in the first quarter. And 
coming in, I think a lot of people, myself included, thought it'd be the other way around where you'd see Liberty Benton sending a lot of the shots back on Crestview. But Crestview doing a great job of getting their hands on the basketball and not picking up fouls. You're right, Nate. Karis Willow and Sophia Barbara both have 17 blocks, but so far Crestview's been doing the damage with the block shots. But great finish there by Gherkin inside. Gherkin on the mismatch that time, able to get the basketball going towards the basket and finish for two. And we are all tied up. 4.40 left to go here in the opening quarter. Crestview with the basketball. And now Crestview just trying to be patient, not wanting to force anything. That's a great call. They do want to be patient, look for good looks. That's a great look right there for Josie Kowicki. She comes up empty. And now Liberty Benton going to push the pace, kicks it down to the corner. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Rebound down to McCoy. And we've seen McCoy be aggressive at both ends here in the early going. Her quickness, she's been able to penetrate against this zone. Great rebound right there. She's going to be a key figure for Crestview if they're going to be successful. Great find underneath as Gregory's able to finish, and she has her first two points of the game. Yeah, give the assist to Lacey McCoy. She got the ball in the dead spot. Gregory cut to the basket. The Crestview quickness is showing itself against that 2-3 zone right now. Irwin. With the three-pointer, but prior to that, we're going to have a whistle. Going to be an offensive foul. This one is going to go on number 23, Lauren Gherkin. That is her first. So the leading score for both squads, Lauren Gherkin and Callie Gregory, they both have one foul here in the early going. Again, we'll see how that plays as the game continues. Everybody Benton tried to show some pressure there. Crestby able to get out of it. Gregory gets her own offensive rebound and puts it up. Back-to-back -back buckets for Callie Gregory. Yeah, nice ball movement for Crestview there. Again, their quickness is showing itself here in the early going against the Liberty Benton Eagles. See the double team on Gherkin down low. They're leaving Sophia Barbara all wide open, all alone there down in the corner, not concerned with the three-point shot. And we're going to have a foul. This one is on Josie Kowicki as she was one of the two players on Lauren Gherkin down low. They got a little tangled up, hit the floor. You're right, there are going to be players open in this defense. Uh, three girls playing man-to-man, -man, two playing zone. Kirk in the Bowling Green State commit, drives across the lane, up with the left hand. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Karis Willow, who checked back into the game. Another drive. This time it's by Irwin, and she's able to get it for two. Nice penetration by Riley Irwin right there. She finishes. And then Liberty Benton with their 2-2-1, back to their 2-3 zone. Crestview breaks it. McCoy trying to get around the defense down low, has the basketball taken away. Pushed up ahead to Gherkin. Crestview able to get their hand on it, so Gherkin has to pull it back out. Lobbed on the inside to Willow. Willow turned around, lays it up with the fingertip roll. Karis Willow, great footwork, and as you said, the fingertip underhand roll. Nice job there by Liberty Benton. Karis Willow with the bucket. All tied at six here, 2.30 left to go in the opening quarter. See the defense from Liberty Benton stepping up a little bit here, a little bit more energy. In this 2-3 zone, the, the guards will come out and play it. There's openings right there at the elbows. You see Macy Kowicki dribble it to that spot and drill it, the 15-footer. Kowicki did a nice job of getting that shot off quickly. As you saw Willow coming out, almost able to get a piece of that. Let Crestview back on top, and a give and go this time. Willow to Wrecker, no good. Rebound down to Gregory. Nice play by the Eagles. Everything but the ball going in the basket on that play, particular play. Good execution other than the bucket. See Crestview just trying to find some soft spots in the zone right now. They've had some success when they've been able to move the ball. They haven't stayed stagnant. And they do that, that zone's lost a couple of the nights as they've been able to either get underneath the basket or get to the middle of the lane and be able to convert. Here one more time, right around the free throw line, has to pass it back out. Gregory, a long three-pointer on its way in. Good for Callie Gregory. Great shot by Gregory. Again, set up by Ellie Klein, penetrating into the middle of that zone, causes the, causes the defenders to close down on her. Gregory with the open luck. Saw the collapse on Willow. She passes it back out. They get it back to Willow underneath. And they're going to have a travel as Callie Gregory is playing a heck of a game here in the first quarter. 
Seven points offensively, but defensively, several rejections, and right there getting all ball with that hand to cause the travel. A great job here in the early going. Correct, Nate. And you see that she's got some tape on her left knee. Had that kneecap pop on her a little bit in the last game against Kaleida. 46-40 victory for the Lady Knights. But she's out there competing. You're right. Klein was able to get this one down on the inside of Kilwicky. That one gets knocked out of bounds. Going to stay with the Knights. Great block by Lauren Gherkin to Crestview. Coach Gregory, he's got to be pleased. They were able to penetrate, make a pass down to the block. They'll maintain possession with the ball under out of bounds. Pass comes out to Kilwicky. Gives it right back to Klein. Three-pointer up. This one's no good. Willow with the rebound. 40 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. Wrecker, she's going to drive. Gets cut off, has to pull it back out. Gets left all alone into the corner. They're going to let that three-pointer go. That one's no good. Gregory with the rebound. She had tell here in the early going, it looks like for Crestview, the strategy is basically anybody other than Irwin can shoot as many three-pointers as they'd like until they start making them, but they are not going to get beat on the inside. Correct. And playing head games a little bit, as you said, record was wide open. She is a good three-point shooter, but sometimes when you're that wide open, you notice it and you take away your concentration from just shooting the basketball like you normally would. There goes Kahn, slip pass, nice, and a finish. As Kent, Josie Kilwicky scores the final two-pointer here in this first quarter, and Crestview came out strong, and they are going to end the quarter on top 13-6. to six. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Welcome back to Reyes or Gymnasium. Nick Garlic alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, great first quarter. All Crestview offensively as they really did a nice job of shutting down Liberty Benton. Yeah, Crestview uh, Lady Knights are four for nine from two, one for three from three. They have seven rebounds and only two turnovers. Liberty Benton, three for six from two, 50%. And a tall tale sign from that first quarter, Liberty Benton 0 for 5 from distance, 0 for 2 from the free throw line as well. Liberty Benton with one block and two steals. Crestview's going to begin the second quarter with the basketball. That one almost ends up in the backcourt, but Kilwicky able to gather it in. They're going to have a foul. They're going to get Riley Irwin on this one. That's going to be her first team second. So you saw the trap coming, and Riley Ir Irwin just trying to reach in to get that basketball, got a little bit too much hand. I think Coach Irwin's going to ask his defense to be a little more aggressive on the ball without fouling. But again, there's some holes. If you look at the NWC right now, it's wide open as Lacey McCoy occupies that area. Gowicki passes it back to Gregory in the corner. Crestview again, as they have been here this whole game so far. Being patient, just trying to find the opening. Gregory now on the opposite side of the floor. The offense is just going to flow and look to see what Crestview will give them. Here's McCoy. She's going to attack the basket, but there's going to be a travel first. Yep, shuffled the puppies, left the ground with both feet, and the travel occurred. It's going to be Liberty Benton. Patience is the key for Crestview. They like to run. But when you go against the talent that Liberty Benton puts on the floor, and they like to have that up-tempo style as well, uh, it makes you think twice about it. Willow gets it on the inside, back out to Irwin. Some miscommunication that time, but Gherkin able to gather it in. Willow going to go to work, working against Gregory. Has the dump off to Wrecker, and Wrecker for the finish. And that's what happens when you have to spend so much energy on one player as all the attention went there. Wrecker just able to slip to the other side of the basket and was wide open. Yeah, nice play by Liberty Benton. Coach Irwin probably drew that up in the timeout, finding some holes in that defense that Crestview's playing. And we will have a timeout as Crestview did not want to lose the possession. 30-second timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Welcome back. As you take a look at the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, Crestview still on top, 13-8. But we're starting to see a little bit of what 
Liberty Benton tries to take advantage of as Crestview's strategy is clearly no one's going to beat us on the inside. We see him doubling Lauren Gherkin. We see them doubling Karis Willow, not letting those two get off. But what they're doing then, we're leaving people wide open. What adjustment does Crestview have to make so when that player rolls, somebody is there? It's a great decision or a great call, Nate, the adjustment. Um, three girls playing man-to-man, -man, two playing zone. You can't have two double the ball. The two girls that are playing zone double the ball. The, the one girl's got to drop to the basket who is not guarding the ball in that particular possession. We'll see what adjustment they makes they make coming into their next defensive possession. So a couple of long passes here on this offensive set as Gregory they will take it. She's going to work against Willow, trying to use the basket as an extra defender and does a great job as Willow was not able to get fully extended over that basketball, and Gregory gets two more points. Yeah, great move by Callie Gregory. Going to go right back at her at the other end, though. Gregory with the rebound. Gregory trying to push Temple, pushes it up. Here's Kowicki. Kowicki as Gherkin comes all the way across. And that wasn't a foul as Gherkin did a great job not getting into the body. Just she grabbed the basketball and landed out of bounds. Yeah, she did. Hustling back. Lauren Gherkin gets a hand on it. Crestview maintains possession. Here's McCoy at the free throw line. Right back to Kilwicky as she kicks it out. McCoy, long shot, no good. Gregory runs down the rebound. Goes baseline, kicks it back out. And now Crestview going to look to slow things down a little bit and get back into their offensive set. Gregory right into the middle. McCoy runs baseline, lets the floater go, no good. Overcooked that one, good penetration. Gherkin with the rebound. Irwin for three. That one rattles in and out. As so far, Riley Irwin struggling to find the range. She's been close, but they haven't started to fall quite yet. That was a great look. I don't know how it didn't go down. That's one of the fun parts of basketball. Sometimes you're thinking, ah, it's going to go in, and it doesn't. And other times you're thinking, oh, no way, and it does. The wiki has this one taken away. as She was trying to get a slip past the McCoy. Wrecker, she's going to drive into the lane against Gregory. Gregory does a great job. But it is followed in by Willow, who puts it up for two. Yeah, Addy, or excuse me, Karis Willow is leaving her mark on this game here in the second quarter, really being aggressive offensively. McCoy finds Klein. Klein had some space, and she wouldn't take the shot, but kicks it out to Gregory. Gregory for three. That one's no good. No one back for the long re rebound as Riley Irwin gathers it in. She's going to find Gherkin. Gherkin working against Gregory. And Gregory is going to get called for the foul that time. She had good position. But she let those arms come over to try to get that block. And Lauren Gherkin is going to make another trip to the free throw line. So Coach Gregory's got a decision to make. That's Callie Gregory's second personal foul. His squad's up five. He has a lot of trust in Callie, who is his daughter, to make good decisions. But in this defense that they're playing, there's a lot of pressure on her because she's down around the basket playing defense in the interior, a place where you're prone to pick up personal fouls. So See if they make the adjustment and put Gregory at the top in that two-person zone and Kennedy Kreider, who just came in the game, if she goes down low. And we do have two substitutions, but they're not for Gregory, who will stay in the game with two fouls. Nevaeh Ross checks in, as does Kennedy Kreider. So far, Crestview hasn't gone to the bench. This is the first time we've seen substitutions tonight. Kreider gets it back up to Klein. And she gets it right back down to Kreider. Kreider has this one, looked like partially blocked, but gets her offensive rebound. As Crestview now is going to reset as they have a second opportunity here on this offensive possession. And now Liberty Benton doing a nice job of denying Gregory. As every time she comes through, you're seeing several different uh, Liberty Benton Eagle players come all over her and Crestview right now not finding a lot of space in this defense. They are struggling a little bit. Give credit to the Liberty Benton defense. The way the ladies are sliding now, much more aggressive in their defensive posture. Four minutes left to go here in the first half. As Nevaeh Ross looking for a little bit of space around Wrecker, has to pass it off to Klein. She's now guarded by Wrecker. Klein getting close to the half court, has to get rid of it. And we're going to have... A five-second call. It was a five-second call, so Liberty Benton does their job defensively as Crestview gets the turnover. And we just have a three-point game now. 
Four minutes left to go in the half. And Crestview did make that adjustment defensively with Callie Gregory at the free throw line now. Irwin tries the other side. This one no good. Willow somehow falling down. Still got that one to go. She cuts the lead to one, picking up her third bucket of the game. She has six points now. Willow, the Penn State commit for volleyball again, making her mark here in the second quarter for Liberty Benton. Not a lot of teams in the entire state are going to be able to take a six foot three girl and bring her off the bench like this Liberty Benton team does. She is a great asset to have, and you saw why on that last possession. Liberty Benton, or excuse me, Crestview on the last couple of offensive possessions have struggled, haven't gotten clean looks, trying to reverse that fortune here. That's a great point, Nate. A little more stagnant offensively, not penetrating with the dribble, passing the ball, holding it a little bit. Again, credit to Liberty Benton defense. Gregory going to go baseline. I've seen her do this a couple of times. Willow was ready for it that time, though. Sends it back, but it gets poked away. Ends up back in the hands of Klein. Klein is working to go on the lane. Decides to pull it back out. And now here's Gregory. She finds Klein, a cutting Klein. Nice head fake. Got Willow off her feet, but can't get it to go down. Gherkin with the rebound. Great up fake. Just finished at the, or just missed the finish at the basket. Did Ellie Klein. Irwin thought about another three-pointer, but decided against it. Here's Wrecker. They're going to feed Willow down low. And we're going to have a foul. This one is going to go against Kennedy Kreider. Just the fourth team foul for Crestview, so this one will be out of bounds. Yeah, Liberty Benton again looking for Karis Willow down there. She averages just under four points a game. Doing a nice job. Willow catches this as one outside the three-point line. A lot of space for Wrecker. She goes in, gets it back to Willow. Willow give and go to Wrecker. No good. Willow with the offensive rebound. Doesn't even have to jump on the putback. Yeah, those offensive rebounds will kill you. Right now, that's what's happening. Liberty Benton taking advantage of a turnover. Wrecker one more time. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Crestview. The pace picking up a little bit in the full court. Lacey McCoy finds, McCoy, yeah. Wrap around pass to Kennedy as Kennedy Kreider gets that one up for two. And it's been a long scoring drought, but Crestview gets some points up on the board. Crow hands it off to Gherkin. Gherkin for three. That one's no good. McCoy does a nice job on the box out, gets the basketball. Right now, Liberty Benton has numbers. Gregory. Three-pointer on its way, no good. Long rebound to Irwin. Irwin passes it up to Wrecker, but McCoy, nice hustle play to take that one away. Coach Gregory's saying, slow it down here. Let's get into our offensive set. 17-16, Crestview on top. And just a minute 13 left to go here on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Saw McCoy try to get that one by Willow. Willow got her hand on it. McCoy gets it back. Again, that elbow area is open where McCoy has the ball right now. But getting it there and doing something with it has been a challenge because of Willow being right there in the middle of the paint. Rescue trying to spread out Liberty Benton and now looks content to just run this time out. Might see them try to hold this for the last 40 seconds, see if they can't get the last shot of the half. Twenty-five seconds left to go. Still plenty of timeouts if Coach Gregory wants to take one to set up a play here to end the half. If not, we'll probably see Gregory try to drive, get something going to the basket. She pulls up from just behind the three-point line. That one, or excuse me, the free throw. That one was no good. Gherkin, long outlook past the record, but a little bit too much on that. And with five seconds left to go, Crestview will get the last last shot here in this first half. Yeah, Gherkin just overcooked that pass a little bit. Gives Crestview an opportunity with 5.3 to get a look. Gregory going to have to go quick. Works against Irwin. She's going to pull up. Sends it on its way. That one just off the front of the rim. And that is going to bring the first half to a close. Exciting first half. And as we head to the locker room, the Crestview Lady Knights are on top of Liberty Benton, 17-16. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back to Ray Esler Gymnasium inside Crestview High School. We are just about at the end of halftime. Nick Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, you know, I'm not quite sure a lot of people would have thought that first half went the way that it did. Crestview did a great job, especially in that first quarter, uh, of really finding open shots. Callie Gregory made some big th things happen offensively and defensively. Liberty Benton did a nice job making adjustments in that second quarter, though. They did, you know, and halftime adjustments for both squads. If you're Liberty Benton, Coach Irwin, he's dissecting that tandem at halftime, probably drawing a little bit up on the board about how to attack that two-person zone, three-person man-to-man defense. The give-and-go has been good to them. Liberty Benton, stat-wise, 0 for 8 behind the arc, and they've had some clean looks. Addie Crow leads Liberty Benton at 45.9% from three. She hasn't scored yet. She hits a couple buckets. That may make Crestview come out of that defense. And if you're a Lady Knight fan, the difference between the first and second quarter was that dribble penetration. They got away from that against that 2-3 zone. They still need to get in there, jump stop, and see what they have, kick it out for open looks. And for Crestview, Ellie Klein, she's penetrated a little bit, but when she's gotten in there at the free throw line, she hasn't looked to score. And there's been some open looks. She needs to do that. But overall, Liberty Benton averages 60.8 points per game. They've got 16 right now. If you're a Crestview Lady Knight fan, you're tickled to death about that. You're, you've got their scoring held down. And Crestview, you're, you're right where you want this game to be. There's so much talent on this Liberty Benton squad. You want to keep it under control. And thus far, they've been able to do that. We're underway now here in the third quarter. Liberty Benton begins with the basketball. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And we talked about that give and go. We saw it right there as Willow got it on the inside, was trying to find Wrecker, but some miscommunication as that one goes out of bounds. So an instant turnover as Crestview now gets the ball back, and they'll see a little bit of pressure here from Liberty Benton. Yep, they'll face that 2-2-1 that drops back to a 2-3 zone. Dangerous part of the floor there for Gregory to pick it up. Not the best pass as Wrecker pokes that one away. Irwin running the floor, but she loses the handle. It's going to go out, and it will stay with the Eagles. So Liberty Benton had an opportunity with a live ball turnover to be able to score. They are unable to do that, but the ball does go out on Crestview. Liberty Benton maintains possession. You talked about the scoring averages for this Liberty Benton team as a whole. When you break it down individually, number 11, Riley Irwin, averaging almost 17 points a game. So far tonight, Riley has two points. Lauren Gherkin, she averages almost 20 points a game. So far, Lauren Gherkin has four points. So they have done a nice job of shutting them down. The leading scorer for the Liberty Benton Eagles has been Karis Willow. She has eight on the night. Gregory gets it down to McCoy in the corner. She passes it out to Klein. Klein almost had that one taken away, but able to get it back in. You got to go in there strong with that dribble penetration. There's the open elbow. McCoy, she had a look there. Did a nice job of getting Willow to leave her feet, but not able to get around quite quick enough. Tried to get it over to Gregory, but it gets knocked out of bounds. And Klein's going to take the inbounds. And we were talking about Klein during halftime. She had some good looks. You know, you think if you're Coach Gregory, you'd like to see her be a little bit more aggressive, though, when she has those openings in the middle to look to shoot first instead of looking to pass right away. And she can score. She's the second leading scorer for Crestview at 10 points per game. There it is. Line, wide open. And she's trying to force it down low to Gregory. Passed up a shot again as Gherkin able to take this one away. Lauren Gherkin hands it off. Here's Crow. Crow's going to drive. Gets that one off the glass. No good. Gregory with the rebound. Callie Gregory pushes it up ahead. Kilwicky, she tries to shoot. Willow knocks that one down. McCoy with the hustle play takes it away. Back out to Gregory. Here's a three-pointer. That one rattles down and in. Inside out action. Ellie Klein out to Callie Gregory. And Coach Irwin's going to take his first timeout of the game on that three-pointer. 6.27 left to go here in the third quarter. Crestview on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Coach Irwin quickly wanted to take a timeout here early in the third quarter as a little bit of sloppy play eventually led to the basketball, ended up back in the hands of Callie Gregory, and she buries a big three-point shot. Yeah, I think Coach Irwin, as you said, sloppy plays, encouraging his 
team to take care of the basketball, be definitive with it. This defense that Crestview's playing has caused Liberty Benton to slow down and think. And sometimes we call that stinking thinking if you're out there, just need to play the game and not try and dissect too much. And right here, there's a nice give and go. Extra pass to Crow in the corner. That one goes off the backboard. And Willow, as she went to pivot around, one of the few advantages of being six foot three is she tried to go with the pivot and her foot just a little bit too long there on the leg. Ends up out of bounds and back to Crestview. McCoy able to gather that one in. Goes all the way up, but has it rejected as Crow was able to get her hands on it. Lauren Gherkin now, she's going to drive, pulls it back out, and lets Liberty Benton get set. Willow with the give and go to Wreckers. Wrecker is able to go free as Crestview one more time was with the double on Willow. And Wrecker went right around them, never saw her coming. That give and go, we've seen that work several times tonight. Yeah, great pass out of the post by Willow. Just so calm in there against the double team. McCoy with the stutter step. Oh. Have a push. The ball went in the basket. We'll see if the official, Doug Etzler, counts it or not. I did. It does and count. They did. They Continuation as McCoy is going to go to the free throw line for the end one opportunity. Great job by Lacey McCoy to get the head fake, get everybody off their feet, take that contact, and still able to get it in. The reverse layup. Lacey McCoy playing with house money there with the foul called, and then she scores a little NBA continuation. Lady Knight fans will take that any day. So Lacey McCoy with her fifth point of the night. Crestview back on top, 23-18. Wrecker tries to lob it inside to Crow, has it taken away by Gregory. Two on two, Gregory pulls up at the free throw line. That one's off the right, but a nice hustle play by Klein to get the offensive rebound. Reversing the ball again. You see, every time the Crestview player catches the ball, they put it in low ball position, keeping it down, gives them opportunities to dribble, pass, or shoot. Crestview's tried driving into the middle a couple times here on this possession, but they've been cut off by that length of Liberty Benton, so they've had to pull it back out, continue, continuing to show good patience. Now here's Ellie Klein. Got Willow to leave off of her feet. Not able to get a shot up as number 23, Lauren Gherkin, came over to help. But after all that, ends up going out of bounds and staying with the Lady Knights. Ellie Klein needs to make that adjustment. Just one dribble too many right there into the teeth of that zone defense along the baseline. Gregory all alone. Can't get that one to go. McCoy fights for the loose ball. And they're going to call. Stepped a, out of bounds. They're going to stay out of bounds. At first, I thought they might have gotten a pushing foul, but it's going to be a turnover. Again, the pace of this game. It's all about what Crestview wants. Liberty Benton wants more up-tempo, but they haven't been able to create the steals or get the defensive rebound and the quick outlet to make that tempo speed itself up. Another three-pointer for Liberty Benton. That one's off. Willow with the offensive rebound. She gets it to go. Karis Willow, another offensive rebound, as you said, Nate. Give her the stick back. Kisses it off the window. Nicely done. And another turnover by the Lady Knights. Klein almost reached in there to poke that one away from Wrecker. You can see Wrecker trying to get in position, going to try to get it to Willow, but instead ends up to Crow. Crow off the glass, no good. Willow one more time as Crestview just does not have an answer for the size of Karis Willow down low. We're going to have a timeout as Coach Gregory wants to talk about it, try to make some adjustments. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And it has been an up and down here half for Crestview. We've seen some good offensive plays, but they're struggling right now to hold on to the basketball. Yeah, they've had some turnovers here in the latter half of the, well, the midpoint here of the third quarter. And then they allowed offensive rebounds by Karis Willow. The beginning of the third quarter, Crestview jumped out of the lead and Coach Irwin called timeout, and that was mainly because Liberty Benton has five turnovers thus far in the quarter. Liberty Benton immediately comes out with the trap. McCoy able to get out of it, has to get cut off. 
Kowicki for three from the corner. That one's too strong. Good luck. Kowicki just overcooks it. Nice pass along the baseline from McCoy. And here's Wrecker again. Throwing Kowicki. it to Riley, yep. Kowicki playing nice defense, coming out, putting a little bit of pressure on Riley Irwin that time. She has to get rid of it. Wrecker loves to be on that spot of the floor as that give and go with Willow has been there more often than not. Nice little head fake, got McCoy to leave her feet. McCoy, though, can't finish. Gregory loses her footing, and Willow able to gather that one in for two. Johnny on the spot. Karis Willow finds herself with another bucket. Karis Willow, two points in the first quarter, six points in the second quarter, and eight in the third. But that time, Macy Kowicki made the adjustment and able to get that three-pointer to go. Macy Kowicki with her sixth three-pointer of the year right there. Lob pass, this time Gregory able to knock it away, and saves it into McCoy. Gregory gonna run along the sidelines. It's slip pass down low. Kilwicky saves it, here's McCoy, lines up a three-pointer and gets it to go. Back-to-back -back three pointer by the Lady Knights. They've been able to extend their lead to five. Inside out, action, Josie Kowicki out to Lacey McCoy. Three-pointer, big time, and McCoy, that's her second three of the year. Kirk and almost traveled on that one, is able to get it back in. Played tightly by Kowicki, lost her footing, turn around jumper and gets it to go. The Bowling Green commit says, okay, we got to get going here. Gets to the middle of the floor, nice turnaround jumper for Gherkin. Minute 50 left to go in the third quarter, Crestio on top three. Klein slips it to Kowicki. Kowicki has that one blocked by Willow, and she will take a trip to the free throw line. Willow. A little tough getting up. Not sure if it was a knee or an ankle. So she is a little hobbled. Hopefully she's okay. But you're right. There's a little bit of pain right now for Karis Willow in the lower extremity. She looks over to the bench, makes a motion to Coach Irwin, who's going to get her subbed in here after this first free throw. You know, and I think if you're Coach Gregory, that might be a little bit of the frustration is, you know, when you start to go into the middle, especially against the size of Liberty Benton, you know, you, it can be intimidating. And you can sometimes want to pull that one out. But if you just attack them, maybe you get the whistle. Maybe you get that foul. And if you can get some of these bigs in foul trouble, that's what you're looking to do, make some trips to the free throw line, those types of things. And we finally see that pay off as Josie Kilwicky makes one of two for her free throws. Yeah, great point, Nate. Attacking the rim is always a good position to be in. Fight that pressure defense with pressure offense. But man, those girls are big in there for Liberty Benton. A lot of length. That's yeah, a lot easier for me to say from up here <laughs> instead of being down there driving against them. So number four, Lindsey May checks into the game for Willow. Wrecker with the jump. And that one's no good. Gregory gets it over to McCoy. Almost threw that one out of bounds. McCoy does a nice job of gathering that one in. A minute 15 left to go here in the third quarter. Crestview with the four-point lead. Macy, Macy Kilwicky with already one three-pointer here in the quarter, but drops it off to Klein. Klein nowhere to go with it, has to get rid of it. Long pass across the court. Macy Kilwicky. Now we're seeing that patience that Crestview has shown for most of this game on this offensive set. Not trying to force a bad shot, just giving what Liberty Benton will, uh, or take what Liberty Benton will give them. Excuse me, as you see Klein dribble out of trouble, and that one was poked away. Gherkin, she's gonna stop, puts it up, and good. Lauren Gherkin with her fourth point of the quarter makes this a two-point game. Shot off the dribble in rhythm. You can see why Gherkin is as good as she is. Over and back on the Lady Knights. And a mental mistake that time by Lacey McCoy. She saw Callie Gregory coming across down the floor and just passed it back to her lost, her, lost a little bit of where she was on the floor, so an easy turnover for Liberty Benton with 22 seconds left to go. Kylie Recker. She loves to get down onto that right side, does it one more time, and now the give and go is going to be with Lauren. She was triple teamed, so they got it out to Riley Irwin, who makes her first three-pointer of the night. And Liberty Benton goes on top for the first time all game. Two yep. seconds left to go. Gregory gets a good look at it, but that one's off the side of the rim. 
and that will bring the third quarter to a close. So a flurry of scoring to end that quarter ends up with Liberty Benton being on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And, you know, third quarter, you know, it seemed to be starting off in Crestview's favor. Once again, Liberty Benton does a nice job making some adjustments, and after a flurry in that last minute, they sit on top with their first lead of the night. Yeah, they win the quarter 15-13. to 13. As you said, they hit the three at the end. Riley Irwin, that's the first three for Liberty Benton in this game. First three-point field goal made. That may allow them to relax a little bit. We've noticed Kylie Recker's been open. She's not looking to shoot. She averages seven points per game. She likes dishing it. She likes dealing dimes. She leads the squad with five assists per game. But right now, that defense will see what happens here as the game continues. You see, they immediately come out and want to give some pressure. Kilwicky trying to get out of trouble. And we have a five-second call, the second one of the game against the Lady Knights. And on the first possession here of the fourth quarter, Crestview turns it over. You don't like a five-second call, but what can you do with a five-second call? You can go back and set up your defense. A live ball turnover didn't result. Crestview can get back into their tandem defense. And there's Wrecker right there with the ball looking inside. Now Crow has it. So Karis Willow had to go off the court as she was walking gingerly as Lauren Gherkin is coming alive. That is another jump shot made for her. And Liberty Benton stretches it to a three-point lead. As Harris Willow walked off gingerly. She is back on the floor for the Eagles. Glad to see that that wasn't a serious injury. And uh, McCoy, Lacey McCoy, comes up with a big answer. Just a two-pointer, but stops a little bit of that bleeding that Liberty Benton, they were putting that pressure on. Cuts the lead to one. Willow on the inside, working against Gregory. Here comes the double team. Kicks it back out. Racker for three. That's no good. Riley Irwin there for the cleanup. No good. And uh, McCoy comes up with a big defensive rebound. So big time players step up in big games. This is two quality programs going at it. And again, well, let's see what Gregory does down the stretch as well as Lauren Gherkin. Those two ladies have played a lot of basketball. I think they played together in the summer a little bit as well on traveling teams, so they know each other. It's gonna be a fun game down the stretch here, Nate. That had to be one <laughs> good traveling team with those two on it. Uh huh. Here's Klein working through the middle, kicks it back out. Kilwicky slips it down to Gregory. Triple team's coming, passes it back out. Klein thought about that three-pointer, decides against it. Kilwicky head fake. Has to find somewhere to do with the basketball, gets it out to Klein. Klein gets it shot up and good. And that's what we've talked about. Ellie Klein, more than capable of making that shot, has had that opportunity several times tonight. Hadn't pulled the trigger, but when she does, she made it and it is back down to a, um, excuse me, it is now a one-point lead for the Lady Knights. Rector gets the ball into Willow there. Lacey McCoy comes down hard for the double team with Gregory, but she picks up the personal, just her first foul of the game. That is just the team's first as well. We have had a pretty clean game all around. Gherkin gets the inbounds. Loses the handle, gathers it back in right around midcourt, gets it over to Wrecker. Wrecker's going to work into the lane. McCoy slides off to guard her. It's just so challenging. You didn't expect to see this different kind of defense. Wreckers had to work really hard to get a feel for the game offensively. Riley Irwin short on that one. Here's McCoy. She's just going to take it in, kicks it back out. And Willow comes over. She was flying. She thought for sure that Ellie Klein was going to pull the trigger on that three-pointer. And she fell into Klein. So Willow's going to fill, pick up her second foul. Good head fake by Klein to get Willow off her feet to draw the foul. Ellie Klein comes over to get the basketball. Bill Wicke decides to keep it herself. Back into the corner to Macy. Macy finds Gregory. And 
Now just a little bit of two-man game that time. Finds a cutting McCoy. Crestview doing a nice job of reversing the basketball from inside out or around the perimeter against this staunch 2-3 zone. Gregory trying to use her quickness. Got Willow off her feet. And Karis Willow with her foul. Third foul, excuse me. And Callie Gregory will make a trip to the free throw line. Gregory's going to go to the free throw line where she's a 68% free throw shooter. You just feel like this game, someone's going to have a spurt. And, and that's that's what we're going to see. And it, if, if I would put my money on who's going to have that spurt ability opportunity, Liberty Benton, they, they can do that. But Cressy has been so strong with the basketball, Liberty Benton has not been able to force the turnovers like they normally do. And that has created some challenges for Liberty Benton then offensively in the half court. Crestview able to stretch their lead to three, 440 left to go here in the game. Gherkin puts it on the floor, goes around with the right hand, and she is going to be fouled. They're going to get number four, Ellie Klein, for her first of the game. As just Crestview's second team foul. Willow thought about the handoff, decides to keep it herself. Passes down to Wrecker on that opposite side. And Willow has made some great passes out of the post tonight, but that time she and Wrecker are unable to connect. Ball goes out of bounds. Lady night basketball. And we've seen when Willow has that basketball and she's trying to back it down. She doesn't do the greatest job protecting it. We'll see if Crestview picks up on that. Maybe can get a steal here late in the game. Gregory not able to handle that one. It gets pushed up ahead to Wrecker. But Kilwicky able to track that one down. Great recovery defense in transition. The Lady Knights get a turnover of their own to keep Liberty Benton from getting an uncontested layup. McCoy to Gregory. Thought about the three-pointer, decides against it, just goes right into the lane into attack mode is Callie Gregory. Can't get it to go, loose ball. They're on the floor diving for it. And we, they're gonna say out of bounds, last touch by the Knights. So the basketball will go back to Liberty Benton Eagles. So Crestview will hustle back. They do not want to extend their defense at all. That Liberty Benton quickness would show itself in the full court. Going to make them earn it in the half court. One of the things to keep an eye on, too, as Liberty Benton hasn't been really challenged yet this year. Not a lot of close games, especially late, as Irwin comes up short on that three-pointer. So I'm sure Coach Irwin is you know, interested to see how his girls respond to this tough challenge that the Crestview Lady Knights are putting up. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Welcome back to Ray Esler Gymnasium. 3.37 left to go in the game, and the Crestview Lady Knights holding on to a three-point lead over the undefeated Liberty Benton Eagles. And I think coming in, you would have thought that Crestview, they can get into a shootout. They have girls that can score. That you would have thought that their chance of staying in this game might have to be. They got to get hot shooting. It's going to have to be up-tempo, fast-paced game, and we may see a 50-60, you know, high 60-point uh, game out of both of these teams. Instead, it's been the exact opposite. It has been a defensive clinic here as we have another turnover as both these teams have really put on the pressure. Defensive clinic, and Crestview has forced Liberty Benton into one for 14 from behind the arc. And that is a tall tale sign because Liberty Benton is a very good shooting basketball team. Riley Irwin with the only three thus far for the Eagles. Addie Crow gets called for her first foul. She had some contact on the arm. So now Crestview with the inbound. Gonna it's look to, to go into the post. Coy gets it to Gregory. Gregory reversed it under the basket for two. Sweet reverse layup by Callie Gregory, big timing on the block. 38-33, Wrecker unchallenged on the inside, but McCoy slid over at the last minute. It was just enough to redirect that shot. Yeah, Kylie Wrecker is so open, she is confused by it, and that can happen. These are high school kids. 
regardless of what happens as far as the win and the loss, Coach Irwin will take this and dissect it, and Wrecker will figure out how to attack that in the future and feel much more comfortable. But tonight, she is anything but. They got Willow way far from the basket. You like to think they try to take advantage of this, try to get something going down low. Yeah, they've got Liberty Benton switching out of the 2-3 zone. They are straight man-to-man -man now. Kilwicky driving around Willow. Willow finally has no choice. She reaches in there for the foul. And Kilwicky was just going to get around her. And Karis, Will excuse me, Karis Willow now with four fouls. And she's going to go out of the game. May's going to come back in. Lindsey May checking into the game for the second time as she spelled Karis Willow earlier. Willow went down with a little bit of a knee injury. Kilwicky gets it in the climb. Riley Irwin guards are tight. This is where Callie Gregory's down on the block, but against this man-to-man, -man, Coach Gregory might want to get her out there with the basketball. And we will have another timeout. Crestview is going to take the full timeout. We'll take it as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Are you looking for that perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan? WOSN's broadcast channel can now be streamed anywhere in the world online, Roku and Apple TV, for only a $100 annual subscription. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.wosn.tv or by downloading the Roku or Apple TV apps. You know, Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen here at the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. And I've been very impressed with the way that Crestview, at times you felt like Liberty Benton, okay, here they come, and this is what we may have expected to see. And every time Crestview has bowed up, they've been up for the challenge, got their lead back, and have been able to extend it here late in the fourth quarter. A lot of grit and determination, and it has been an 8-2 to two quarter in favor of Crestview up to this point in the fourth. I think you're going to see Crestview spread Liberty Benton out now. They like to play that 2-3 zone. Don't know that their help principles will be that strong. See if they can take someone off the dribble or get a cutter like that right there with Lacey McCoy. <laughs> McCoy to Gregory. Allie Gregory. And that all started with Lacey McCoy not panicking as she was completely draped by Lauren Gherkin. And she just waited, anticipated as May launches a three-pointer, that one's no good. But she anticipated where Gregory's going to be. Gregory does a nice job of finishing. Again, it's so challenging for Liberty Benton. We're wide open, but yet it just doesn't feel comfortable. And as a result, they miss the shot. Ellie Klein working against Riley Irwin. As right now, Crestview knows that the time or the clock is on their side as they have a seven-point lead and a minute 30 left to go in the game. We're going to have a tie-up. And the possession arrow favors the Eagles. And Coach Irwin's going to call timeout. Coach Irwin wants to talk, talk to his team about it. We're going to keep it right here with just a minute 29 left to go in the game. And, you know, Dave, Liberty Benton's not going to have a lot of nights like this where they, they struggle shooting the basketball. But on the nights, they've got to find other ways of scoring. And right now, I'm a little surprised that you haven't seen more Lauren Gherkin on the inside, maybe using Willow to kind of you know clear that out a little bit, let her go to work. But they continue to fire from three-point land. They trust that shot. But right now, you know, a minute 30 left to go. They're going to have to find some way to get some big shots here. That's a great point, Nate. I think when Coach Irwin looks at this film, He's going to realize, you know, we needed to get the ball to Lauren Gherkin in a position where she could score and feel comfortable, and I think you're right. That, that's on the block. But the main thing is, is Crestview has just taken Liberty Benton out of rhythm. you got to be in rhythm when you're playing offense. you got to be moving together and cutting. And this is the first time Liberty Benton has been challenged that way all season. You can just tell. So again, it'll be a great learning experience, win or lose, whatever the outcome of this game is. And uh, we'll see how the last minute and a half plays out. So here's Gherkin behind the three-point line, gets it over to Wrecker. There she Wrecker is down finds low. Gherkin. Gherkin steps out. She lets a three-pointer go in, and she gets it. Lauren Gherkin with the step back three gets it to go, and she makes this a four-point game. Bam. Lauren Gherkin, second three for Liberty Benton on the night. Line able to get it across to Gregory. And you can see this man-to-man -man defense 
still putting all sorts of pressure on the Lady Knights. Crestview needs to keep the ball in their best free throw shooter's hands now. It's Liberty Bend next foul. Crestview will go to the line in the bonus. Just moving the basketball around right now. 43 seconds left to go. Liberty Benton trying to get some sort of turnover if they can. This is where you want the ball in Klein and Gregory's hands, and Klein gets fouled. 34.5 seconds left to go in the game. Ellie Klein gets fouled. Ellie Klein, the second leading free throw shooter for Crestview at 77%. She's a gamer, the sophomore, five foot five inches tall, a guard. Riley Irwin gets whistled for the foul. That's her third. And that is the seventh team foul. So Ellie Klein will go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. Klein's free throw. It's up. And it is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Sweet and silent. Ellie Klein, you can hear the net ripple. And Coach Gregory's going to call a timeout. Five-point lead for the Lady Knights with 34.5 to play. Klein looking to drive nails from the free throw line, but again, this explosive offensive team from Liberty Benton, they could come down and hit two threes real quick and tie this thing up in a matter of seconds. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit WTLW.com. Tonight's scoreboard excuse me, is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. You know, Dave, you were talking about you know, the rhythm of Liberty Benton and how they haven't really gotten knocked around pretty much at all yet in this young season. You know, the scoring difference in a lot of their schedule and a lot of their game is, is quite large. They haven't had to kind of dig deep here late in games to try to make things happen and get extra possessions. You know, it'll be interesting to see what they do here. 34 seconds left to go in the game. They've got to find a way to get stops and get extra possessions. You're exactly right, Nate. Their average margin of victory is 32 points. So they haven't been in tight games. They'll learn from this regardless. But again, Ellie Klein at the free throw line, a chance to expand the lead to six. It's currently a five-point lead. Make it six. Ellie Klein, perfect from the free throw line. As Crestview's on top, 42-36. Long pass over to Irwin. Irwin decides to step inside the free throw line. That one also comes up short, as she just cannot quite find the range tonight. And Riley Irwin has to foul Callie Gregory, and that will be foul number four for Riley Irwin. Callie Gregory, the 68% free throw shooter, going to go to the line to shoot one in the bonus. You know, keys to the game. Coach Gregory said we couldn't give up offensive rebounds. They have. Willow has been very good for Liberty Benton. She's had a lot of damage, created a lot of damage inside. But then after that, Blanket, Gherkin, and Irwin, they've done a great job of that. Handled the 2-2-1 press. They haven't turned it over very often against that pressure. And then worked the zone with reversals and dribble penetration. They have executed that brilliantly today. Callie Gregory with her 19th point of the game makes this a three-possession game. Can't get the second one to go as the rebound comes down to Gherkin. 18 seconds. Gherkin's got to go quick. And Great foul. Great foul. Crestview has fouls to give. That's only their third team foul at half court. Clock runs. No points on the board. And we will have a, another timeout. This time we will step aside as Coach Irwin wants to talk to his team about it. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, we were talking about this defense and just how impressive it's been for Crestview. And, you know, it looks a little familiar to you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's tandem defense, but we'll get a chance to talk about that as Liberty Benton looks to score here. Gherkin. That one rattles out. Rebound comes down to Crestview. Six seconds left to go. And Crestview 
Looks like they are on their way to wrapping this one up and coming up with a huge victory against a tough, undefeated Liberty Benton squad. Yeah, and the key has been that defense. We call it a tandem defense. Uh, three girls playing man, then a girl playing zone at the free throw line, and a girl playing zone underneath. Coach Best, the varsity assistant for Coach Gregory, implemented that defense on the boys' side all the way back in 2003 when the Knights went to state. And uh, Coach Gregory and Coach Best, Coach Gregory was a varsity assistant later on after that for Coach Best on the boys' side. Now they have flipped roles. Coach Best, the varsity assistant for Coach Mark Gregory. So, again, it's a great defense to use. They utilized that defense last year against Ottawa Glandorf and came away with a win on the girls' side last year up at Cedar Point. So it's not something you show every day, but when you do, do it's, it's very challenging if the other team hasn't thought about it, looked at it, seen it, prepared for it, and Liberty Bent was caught off guard tonight. And, of course, it's Callie Gregory to send this one and seal the victory. With two seconds left to go, Liberty Benton turns it over, and that is going to do it as for the Crestview Knights get ready to inbound this one to get the victory. And they do. The Crestview Lady Knights are going to extend their win streak to six games, and they have had some quality wins, especially over those last three where they've defeated Columbus Grove, a very good Kaleida squad, and then tonight, by far their biggest test of the season, and I'd say they passed it with flying colors. Absolutely, a 15 to five fourth quarter for Crestview, puts it away. Your final score, 45-36. I've got my stat people, Kent Ralston and Brad Hughes, working on some final looks for us here, Nate, but again, a great, great program win, if you will, for Crestview. Tradition rich, just like Liberty Benton, but man, you looked at everything on paper coming into this game, and you're like, how are these Lady Knights going to keep Liberty Benton from steamrolling them? Because the stat sheet just ekes with awesome numbers for Liberty Benton, but Coach Gregory and Coach Best, they put together a game plan, especially at the defensive end, and it worked to perfection. You know, I think there's no doubt about it. Callie Gregory, very good at basketball. <laughs> there's No one's going to de deny that. 21 points on the night, but one of those unsung heroes that you may not see a whole lot when you look in the stat sheets, Lacey McCoy, 10 points on the night, but she did so many other things as she drew that tough challenge against Karis Willow time and time again. She was working in, on the offensive side of things. She had to get that ball on the inside. She did a lot of distributing. She did a lot of the dirty work that gave Crestview second and third opportunities and denied Willow from getting, I mean, Willow got hers, but Lacey McCoy did a fantastic job tonight all night long. Yeah, Lacey McCoy, she's a glue girl for this Crestview Lady Night program. As you said, does the dirty work. She's going to go in there and rebound. She's going to fight for loose balls. Um, she's going to hit a three. Like we said, she's only had one three on the year. She hit one tonight for her second three of the year. She's a gamer. She's a competitor. She's done it her whole career. She's been a varsity uh, athlete at the volleyball at the basketball, at the softball level since her freshman year. There's a lot of schools in the area that have competed against Crestview. They're going to be happy when Lacey McCoy is no longer putting on a Crestview uniform because it seems like she's been here forever. Yeah, the Crestview Lady Knights did a tremendous job. Liberty Benton, athletes all over the floor, Division I commit Lauren Gherkin, a Division I volleyball commit in Karis Willow. He also, uh, Riley Irwin, she's um, committed to go to Tiffin next year as well. So this is a, an extremely tough Liberty Benton team, but it did not matter because Crestview, just as talented, came in tonight, had a great game plan from Coach Gregory, implemented almost to perfection, and they come away with a big victory. Some of the numbers here real quick. Liberty Benton, they ended up shooting 36% from the floor, 2 for 17 from behind the arc. And that is what spelled doom for them as a whole, Nate. They just did not connect from distance. They had uh, 20 rebounds, and they had 17 turnovers as well. Crestview, they shot 15 for 37 from the floor. That's 40%. They were 4 for 13 from 3, 9 for 12 from the foul line. That was big for them. 
Liberty Benton only shot four free throws. They were two for four. Crestview had 21 rebounds, and they did a great job of taking care of the rock. Crestview only had 12 turnovers. Again, that is a stat that Liberty Benton has used to their benefit through their eight-game winning streak, turning the opponent over. They were una unable to do that tonight, coupled with poor shooting from outside, and that Crestview defensive scheme, Crestview comes away with the 45-36 victory. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Ray Edster Gymnasium inside Crestview High School. I'd like to thank our crew, Megan and Kelsey, working the cameras, doing a great job as always. Megan pulling double duty tonight, going to edit all this for us and make it all sound real good back in the studios. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us as always. One final time from Ray Esther Gymnasium. The Crest Unites come away with a huge victory over the before undefeated Liberty Benton Eagles as they come away with the 45-36 victory. For Dave Bowen, I'm Nate Garlock. Remember, folks, it was a great day to wear shorts. Have a great night, everybody.